Jesus, boy. Let's try to be ready. We're gonna beat you on the easy. Every time. Two chance of Kingston and St. Andrew football in action tonight. Tivoli Gardens traveling to the Tony Spalling Co Sports Complex to tackle Arnett Gardens. A battle of two teams that have been five-time champions of uh, the National Premier League. And they get ready for action tonight. Also a battle that has some political intensity as well because they're on opposite ends of the political spectrum. And usually the fans get a little bit more exciting than excited than usual, George, for this one. Absolutely. So what is true is that this derby sees both teams in differing fortunes on it on the up and it Tivoli deep in the mire neck deep in the quicksand and a victory today would be positive for them because it would signal to, to the fans that there's life in the old dog yet that's for sure on it gardens currently fourth in the table they will move to number two if they win tonight Tivoli gardens at the bottom of the table an unfamiliar position for them this is the 13th round of the red stripe premier league waterhouse the league leaders by a long way 2-1 ahead of humble land yesterday port morant united 2-0 for Mount Pleasant, ending a five-game winning streak for Mount Pleasant. UWI and Cavalier 1-1. Vera United snapping an 11-game winless streak to defeat Malines United, who you remember had won their six first first six matches back to back to back to back to back to back to back. And now they can't find a win in their last seven matches. Dunbar Holden 2-1 over Harbour View. Yep, so the table means, well, the table looks like this after Sunday's games. Waterhouse still out front. They've poached an eight-point lead. Mount Pleasant, Malines, Arnett Garden in their slipstream humble lines stuttering in recent weeks and at the bottom look at Tivoli Gardens you would never expect to see Tivoli Gardens at the foot of any red stripe Premier League table but these days in the post Edward Siaga years the pickings really thin in terms of talent on the ground in Tivoli Gardens and they are where they deserve to be on the play they've exhibited so far this season yeah and it might be ambitious for them to look for a, a big win tonight which would actually take them out of a relegation zone if they can beat Arnett by three or four clear goals but that's something they haven't done recently against this uh, junglist team. Yeah, the junglists have proven to be too strong for Tivoli as the graphic shows from the head-to-head -head over those last three meetings. A clean sheet kept by Arnett in those three three games. And Arnett don't usually keep clean sheets, which yes. shows you how dominant they have been over Tivoli Gardens. Tivoli's best player, Jermaine Johnson, uh, age has caught up with him and injuries more than anything else because yes. he's been a marvellous player for them over the years. He's not the force he wants was because of those injuries and the young brigade coming through almost non-existent. Yeah, 39 years old now, uh, Jermaine Teddy Johnson. He's likely to come off the bench tonight against an Arnett Gardens team that is flying at the moment, undefeated in their last five matches, 10 goals in their last four matches, and they just need to keep that going. Oh yes, as we noted, a win today vaults them into second place in the league, and not many people would have banked on this after the first round of the RSP when Arnett were sleepwalking in the league. They found their mojo on their, under their new coach, Alex Thomas, and I tell you what, this Arnett team is moving from strength Strength to strength. Parker Black's Fabian Reed's return lands. That's the elixir that has done the trick for this Arnett Garden team. That is for sure. And to think that their leading goal scorer, Vishnal Harris, is coming off the bench tonight. He has four goals. No player in the team has scored more goals than he has. But they can afford or have the luxury of uh, using him as a super sub tonight. That tells you just how strong Arnett Gardens are at the moment. Tivoli Gardens looking to lift themselves from the bottom of the table, George. Yeah, and there are some familiar players in the Tivoli ranks, meaning familiar players to the Arnett Gardens team, Newton Sterling and Renique Yannis the man in the is that orange? The orange yeah, reflective kind of neon, neon orange. Well, there yeah. you go. I know the primary colors, my friend. There you go. So <laughs> that familiarity will perhaps aid Tivoli in this battle. It's a derby game, so form goes out the window. Nerves should not come into it. One don't, one, one doesn't think, or one doesn't suspect. And Tivoli will be looking to put their teeth into this Arnett Gardens team as they fight for relevance in this league. Yeah, I have to say though that apart from a four 0 win, that four 0 loss that they had suffered, Tivoli Gardens to UWI at the very start of the season they have not lost their matches by big margins mostly one nil one nil margin two one losses one nil losses some drawn results as well so although they are bottom of the table statistically they are poor and wretched but if you look at the results of the matches you see that uh, they may not have been as far behind the eight ball as their standing suggests that is true but their main players if we if we well their main players are not flying their main players are not confident players yes. up front they they're, they're toothless now rubber teeth is what Tim the gardens were
to sink into flesh. But Tivoli Lance, although you say they've not been spanked by many teams, except for that 4 0 defeat, yeah. the fact is that they've been awful, especially in front of goal in the yeah. attacking third. Yeah, that's for sure. They're looking, they'll be looking to change that tonight. And you'll hear from their manager, Brian Rose, in a short while. We are less than 25 minutes to kick off. This is the home of champions, Sportsmax and Sportsmax 2, providing live top class action for you in the coming days and weeks. Valencia at home to Chelsea in the UEFA Champions League on Sportsmax 2, Wednesday afternoon, 12 31 30. Eastern Caribbean time. Yeah, both teams on seven points in a really tough group. Barca and Dortmund. Dortmund must win. And, to, well, they can draw. And then if Inter Milan win, then Inter Milan will stay out of the knockout round of the Champions League and Dortmund will go forward. So this game on Wednesday is a hugely important one. Schoolboy football, big on sports, Max, both from Trinidad and Tobago and here in Jamaica, St. Andrew Technical against Jamaica College in the Manning Cup final coming up on Friday, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock Eastern Caribbean time. Atletico Madrid and Barcelona. This is a big clash for Atletico. They've not been in the best of form. They've found goal scoring very difficult in recent games. Sunday, 2.55 p.m., 3.55 p.m. in the Eastern Caribbean on Sportsmax 2. That's the La Liga contest on the off. Yes, and Arnett Garns red hot in the Premier League at the moment. They'll be the featured team again on Monday night against Mount Pleasant Academy. So this is a battle of top flight teams in the Premier League at the moment. At the moment, both occupying, occupying top four positions in the Premier League. That comes up 7.30, 8.30 Eastern Caribbean time. And that will be on Sportsmax 2. And because of the pressure that our employer have come on, our, our employers have come on, our employer has come under, it is needful for us to say that the games are unselected by us. We just turn up and turn on our cameras and our lights wherever the PLCA directs us to. That is an explanation for why we've been doing so many Arnett Gardens games in recent weeks. Yes, and uh, there is the Arnett Gardens team getting themselves warm for this fixture. We are about 23 minutes away from kickoff. Arnett Gardens getting ready to battle Tivoli Gardens in the Red Stripe Premier League Monday night showdown. This is actually the Tivoli team we're looking at now. There's Big Newton Sterling. And he is a former Arnett player. Now he's suiting up for Tivoli Gardens. More with a build up after this. Here comes LBJ! <laughs> Look out! Oh, the crowd on their feet. That's what they inside. Oh, into the ball! What kind of goalkeeping was that though? That was shoddy goalkeeping from Nicholas Clark for Tivoli. You owe your teammates one, Nicholas. You dropped a clanger. The builder play, lads. You said it in commentary. It was excellent. Kemal Malcolm combining. This is him. Hardware just around the corner. Sending Sims into space. Didn't have many men to hit. Marvin Morgan was offering him the passing option. And look what the goalkeeper did, lads. That's an assist from the goalkeeper. Well, Nicholas Clark, pretty poor here, drops the ball onto the feet of Marvin Morgan, who follows up well, and the Arnett Gap captain strikes his first goal of the season. And early in the second half, Arnett are in front of visiting Tivoli. 4-2 the final score, Arnett Carnes defeating Cavalier and uh, beating them for the second time this uh, season. Sims, Malcolm, Nesbitt and Reed getting the Arnett Gardens goals. Chin in the pass for Cavalier. Cavalier losing at home for the first time this season. An entertaining game tonight and we now have Arnett Garn scoring, scoring nine goals in their last three matches. Their first goal tonight, Sims rushing on here, outpacing the pass for the ball and neatly sliding the left-footed shot past Mark Brand in goal and the pass there just unable getting into a shoulder contact there with Sims but Sims stands firm here and uh, just places a neat left footed shot low and hard to the far corner Arnett up by one goal to nil this was in the fourth minute Arnett would go further ahead here the ball slid through to Malcolm who outpaces Purcell for the ball and slams the right footed shot past Mark Brand Brand gets a left hand to it but can't stop it and uh, after 23 minutes, Arnett Garns are up by two goals to nil and in complete control at this stage of the match. Huge celebrations here in the Arnett Gardens camp as Malcolm gets his second goal of the season. And uh, here comes Wilson with a cross inside. And look at Nesbet 
from the edge of the 18 with a thunderous left footed strike. He celebrates. Minutes to kick off. It's uh, 27 degrees Celsius here at the moment. Uh, not much chance of rain. Pretty humid night and a slight wind here across the Tony Spalling Sports Complex in Kingston, Jamaica. Red Stripe Football Mondays coming uh, tonight from the Tony Spalling Sports Complex and the home team Arnett Gardens looking for a victory tonight which would stretch their unbeaten record to six matches and uh, push them to number two in the league. And uh, Arnett Gardens, five-time champions of the uh, Premier League, their first title way back in 1978. And they've won two in the last five years, 2015 and 2017. And uh, they were quarter-finalists in the playoffs last year, but weren't able to go through to the semis. Big Al Nesbitt, one of the key players in their team, and he had a goal last week as well against Cavalier. Yeah, plays at left back, very attacking-minded, very strong in the title. Has a hammer of a left foot, Al Nesbitt. Has a good engine on him, and as a big man, he puts himself about from set pieces on both ends, attacking and defending. Has some pace about him, too, and is generally overall a good footballer, is the point I'm making. And uh, yeah, you, he, he, he's He's guaranteed a guaranteed source of entertainment one way or the other. Japonis Sims also a scorer against Cavalier last uh, week and he is a player with a lot of pace, a good left foot on him and uh, uh, we are looking forward to seeing him have a good game again tonight. Keeps his starting position as well for this Arnett Gardens team that is looking to move up the points table. Alex Thomas is the man in charge at Arnett Gardens. He spoke with George. Alex, the team is flying right now. You've hit a very sweet spot in your form. What accounts for this? The hard work, you know, the hard work that the boys are, and the players are putting week in, week out, you know, and they, they are focused and ready, keeping the concentration level up in the camp and working out each, um, for each game. What a difference a player makes, though. Since you've got Fabian Reed back, all of a sudden, Arnett Gardens look like their old, free-flowing, free-scoring self. Talk to us about his influence in the group. Big, you know, um, senior player, you know, he's a top, top class um, striker. And that was plaguing us from the start of the season, scoring the goals. And since his um, appearance, he, he's been doing good for the team, and the team is playing very well around him. You know? uh, talk to us about the assignment against Tivoli tonight specifically. What have you planned to do to exploit the weaknesses in a team that is struggling, perennial rivals, though they are? Yes, team that's struggling, but you know, this, this type of game, this type of game is going to be a tough one. It's a derby clash, you know, rival for, over the years is going to be a battle. But we are ready, we are focused for this challenge. And the players are ready for this thing. It's going to be a good one tonight. Your number 10, Paul Wilson, has looked like the player who came into this league and caught the eye at Cavalier especially. Uh, what accounts for his upturn in form? Um, he's, finding the, he find the right, he's finding the right footing, you know, and uh, um, praises to him. And I just want him to just keep, keep it going. And he's focused and he, he, he applies himself for the big games and he's ready for this one tonight. You're going to see a lot for him tonight. In terms of your defense, as we said to you when we spoke to you previously, this Arnett Garden's shape is different from that which was employed by Jerome Waite uh, for, for, for several seasons. How have the boys bought into the new system? Does every player, are you convinced, understanding of their role? Yes, they're 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 buying they're buying in their um their their role and understanding it. You know, everybody every player, you know, every player are attackers and every players are defenders, and you have to let them express themselves, and that's what they feel they feel comfortable playing. You know, and that under our pressure system, they 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 you know let them play express themselves. Alex Thomas, first year in charge of this Arnett Gardens team and uh, looking to propel them to the top of the table here in the regular season, looking to get into the playoffs. Tivoli Gardens, as we said, like Arnett Gardens, five-time champions of the Premier League, but uh, their last title was way back in 2011 and uh, their performance so far this year has been way below their normal uh, standards and uh, anxiety, we have to say, in the Tip of the camp, George, to get them off the relegation zone. Oh yes, uh, we're looking at Jermaine Johnson, the player with the best resume in the Premier League by far. His resume is better than everybody else's resume put together multiplied by 10. But that was then. He is on the wrong side of 30, knocking on Forty's door. Between his ears, he's the best player in this league by far. But his legs, his body is not what it once was. Has been blighted, his edge blunted by injuries. And uh, he only plays a cameo role now and again. We're looking at this big man now, Newton Sterling, who 
at his best, one of the most potent strikers to play in the Premier League in the last 10 to 12 years. But injuries have also caught up with him, Lance. And uh, yeah, he's a sporadic contributor these days. Yeah, 35 years old now, Newton Sterling. And Brian Rose spoke to George Davis about the problems Tivoli has been having and their efforts to get them back. Well, with Brian Rose, the manager of the Tivoli Gardens team. Brian, this is not the Tivoli we know so far this season. At the foot of the table, what's gone wrong? Well, a very disappointing beginning to the season. Um, I don't know. We tend to have the players, but on a day of, of execution, we're not performing. We have tried various different methods to see what is wrong, and we still cannot put our finger on what's the problem. We're, we're still working. It's work in progress, and we're going to continue working until we fix it, and we get the desired results that we require. One thought that the first round was a write-off in terms of, okay, things have not gone well this round. Let's start afresh in the second round. But to date, we haven't seen that response from the team. Do the boys have the belief that they can compete in this league and show the true Tivoli form? Well, as I said, in the first round we had written off and said, well, we're going to start afresh the second round. Was the first match in the second round was very disappointing. We still believe that we can pull through and, and get the desired results, and that's what we're going to start with this evening. Arnett Gardens have the, 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 the Indian sign over Arnett Gardens, so to speak. They've beaten them the last few times that they've played you, and they've scored several goals against Tivoli without concession. Uh, what is it about Arnett Gardens that Tivoli can't seem to get by them, especially on their home turf? Well, I think when Arne comes to Tivoli, they come to prove a point that they want to win, and they play to win. I think we need to we need to try, try, try to reverse here at Arne now, come to Arne and prove that we want to win and get the desired results here at Arne. What can you tell the Tivoli Gardens fans at Tivoli Gardens and elsewhere around the country about the health and well-being of the football team in the post Edward Siaga period? Well, Mr. Saga was like a, a legend, and we plan to continue with that legend, legacy that he had left with us. And I can assure the fans that we'll get it right, and we'll start performing to the expectation that they want to see. So realistically, Brian, yourself and the team come here with what expectation from this game against Arnett Gardens? To win. We, we want to start the winning role here this evening, and that's the aim, to start winning and start from tonight. So problems here for the uh, Tivoli Gardens. There's Mr. Carl Chang of Western Sports fame. Uh, they have won Tivoli Gardens just one of their last eight games. They have the worst road record in the league at the moment. The odds heavily against them, George, but sometimes when Tivoli uh, come up against Arnett Gardens, they find their best form. Yeah, Derby games form goes through the window. Sportsmax and Sportsmax 2, the home of champions, presenting live UEFA Champions League football on Sportsmax 2, Wednesday afternoon, 12.30, 1.30 Eastern Caribbean time. Chelsea from Stamford Bridge traveling to Spain to tackle Valencia. FC Barcelona up against Dortmund. That's Wednesday at 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock Eastern Caribbean time. Also on Sportsmax 2. Schoolboy football comes up on Saturday in Jamaica. Ben Francis Cup final. Garvin Masia up against BB Coke. That's a 2 o'clock kickoff, 3 o'clock Eastern Caribbean time. And then the big one, the Dacosta Cup final, Clarendon College, Dintil, Saturday, 4.30 p.m., Sportsmax 2, 5.30 p.m. in the Eastern Caribbean. And next Monday, we're back here at Arnett Gardens for the Red Stripe Premier League Clash, Mount Pleasant, the visitors, 7.30 p.m., the pregame show kicks off, 8.30 p.m. if you're outside of Jamaica. The crowd, quiet, waiting in anticipation here for this one. And uh, the... Fans anticipating, well, for Arnett Garns, another fluent performance tonight as they got last week when they beat Cavalier by four goals to two. Tivoli looking for a turn around in form. We are approximately 12 minutes to kick off. This is the Tony Spalling Sports Complex. Red Stripe Football Mondays coming up. Arnett Gardens against Tivoli Gardens. Four. Sean McCoy did. Here's Johnson. Three men breaking to his left. Johnson sends McCoy wrong way. Johnson! Glass from Jermaine Johnson from the halfway line to the 18 yard box. Load to the goalkeeper's right. That's box office. That's why commentators say so much about him because he's so good. You know, when we look at the replay, we'll see that Jermaine Teddy Johnson had no intention, George, to pass that ball. When he got the ball, Thompson
has started sprinting down the middle of the field looking for a possible cross from Johnson. Johnson had on blinkers, George. He had no intention of passing that ball. He knew exactly what he wanted to do. He knew he had the skill to do it. Look at him. Thompson goes in the middle there, outside of him. He's not looking in that direction at all. He takes on the defenders. Closing on to kickoff time here at the Tony Bowling Sports Complex onto the night skies here in Kingston, Jamaica. Arnett Gardens and Tivoli Gardens, two teams facing off with a huge history behind them, both five-time champions of the Premier League. Only Portmore United have won more titles than they have as clubs. But uh, at the moment, Arnett Gardens on the upturn and improving in their form. Tivoli Gardens struggling, as we said, just one win in their last eight matches and looking to lift themselves from the bottom of the table. They're in 12th position at the moment with a win tonight. They will, in fact, do that. But uh, against the Arnett Gardens team at home here, that uh, will be a handful for them. Yeah, it's good to see this Arnett Gardens team settling down under settling down under Alex Thomas's leadership. Many people were upset with the fact that Jerome Wade was no longer in charge of the team, but things change, times change, and Father Time moves on. Mark Golding, the new chairman, has come in, and he wants to do things a certain way, and he wants to have a certain kind of leadership with a certain amount of time devoted to the team. He pulled for Alex Thomas. It started rocky but it has settled down and it's now moving forward. Yeah, and as we've uh, done in the past couple of weeks ahead of our uh, kickoff or segment, the finalists who are fans analyzing, so they're fans and analysts, and uh, both teams looking forward to their key players with uh, AKAs behind their names. Listen out for them. My name is Rosemary Hill from Tivoli Garden. My baller is Teddy, Poppy, Rice bag and Delilah, big up Tivoli. I play, I watch, I play, watch Tivoli match from my, from me about 15. I know me 60 at the old. And Tivoli is my team. I will gain two love tonight. My name is Orias Thomas. I support the team for about 20 years now. 20 at the old. The team just telling and playing good. They have good, good, good players like number 10, Kiki. Yeah, number nine. Um, Barco Black, we call him, Barco Black. And the team playing well right now. It's going to be a hard task. We're going to win two of easily. We're going to beat him easily. And, and right now, the team good and we are going to win. We are going to win. Tivoli now no answer right now to win. And we got honest, big up honest every time. We are going to win easy, man. And Never. the coach is young, you know. Never. But he must come in on right now. Yeah, and it's a good coach. He must come in on And we expect good things from this team. Yeah, we expect to win the final. All right, bless up. Yeah, so the Arnett uh, supporter there backing his players. Kiki, he's talking about Paul Wilson. The Tivoli Garden supporter spoke, spoke about Poppy, that's uh, Junior McGregor. Teddy, who is Jermaine Johnson. So just a few of the <laughs> nicknames in the Tivoli camp. Rice back and Delilah, not too sure who those players are. Your guess isn't as good as mine because I have no guess. <laughs> <laughs> Just ahead of the kickoff, the Arnett Garns Football Club, honoring a couple of their outstanding contributors in the past couple of months. The September Star Player of the Year and the October Star Player of the Year. That's of the Vishnu month. Harris. Of September the month. and October, yeah. yeah. Of the month, yeah. Uh, that was Vishnu Harris there. He was September Player of the Month. And uh, Paul Wilson, they call him Kiki. He was the Player of the Month for October. Precisely so. So the Tivoli boys in their green, looking determined and coming out, but determination alone won't cut it if you don't produce quality, and they've been sorely lacking in quality so far this season, Tivoli. I look at the team sheet, Lance, and you know one of my favorite Tivoli players is Tevin Shaw, but he's been hobbled by injuries, and he's not in this... He's not with the football club anymore, is he? He's with Portmore United the last time I checked. And so they've lost a real quality player. So Tivoli, the, re the investment in the playing squad has not been up to par. And that's part of the reason why they struggled last year and are continuing to struggle into this campaign. The man with the whistle has the ball in hand at the moment. Danian Parchment. Report suggesting that he was on documented reports the leading referee in the Red Stripe Premier League for 2018-2019 and he has this job tonight to 
officiate in a game that usually carries a lot of intensity and sometimes ferocity. The national anthem coming up. Arnett Garns in their trademark red and black. Tivoli Garns in their neon lime green looking outfit tonight. So, George, you mentioned earlier on about some of the Tivoli players having players from other clubs on their roster for tonight's kickoff. Among them, Newton Sterling, a former standout with Arnett Gardens. There's Davian Garrison, who also played for UWI. And uh, Roshain Smith. Roshain Smith, also a former UWI captain. And uh, Jabour Johnson, former Arnett Garden central defender, also on the roster. Kim R. Flemings, I think, spent some time at UWI as well. For sure. And Radika Wellington on the bench is a former Marvel Huenden player. And uh, Reniki Anderson, number 21, former Arnett Garden's title winning the center half. That's right. Confirmation, Damian Parchment has the whistle tonight. He's being assisted by Nicholas Anderson and OJ Duhaney. Veralton Nemhard is the fourth official. Tamar Edwards in the number 19 shirt wears the captain's armband for Arnett Gardens tonight. And Barrington Price has the armband for Tivoli Gardens. The Tivoli Gardens team has only scored eight goals so far this season in the 12 matches they've, they've played. There's the Arnett Gardens starting lineup, exactly the same as it was last week for their 4 2 win over Cavalier, with uh, Romeo Guthrie, the 20 year old number 17, retaining his spot ahead of Vishnu Harris and Giovanni Sims, who was man of the match last week, keeping his starting position. Yeah, Guthrie has been a revelation in the short time he's been here. Uh, played very well against Harborview and then followed that up with a good performance against Cavalier. Nice to see the, tr the coaches continuing to trust him in that midfield. And Fabian Reed, oh, he has made such a the world of difference. Not just to the Arnett Gardens attack, but to the entire Arnett Gardens team. The big striker really playing well since his return from Georgia. The Tivoli Gardens lineup, as you said, Tivoli in real problems here. They have won just two of their 12 matches so far this season. There's their starting roster, Nicholas Clark in, in goal. And we spoke of the many not normal Tivoli players in their roster, including Newton Sterling and Roshane Smith. What about number 24, Donovan Dawkins, the former Jamaica College schoolboy, Manning Cup winner under the tutelage of the former JC coach, and, and Miguel Coley, yeah, that's what I'm, I'm striving to find. Two big men up front for Tivoli Gardens, Newton Sterling, who's not pacey, but deadly in the air, and as a hammer of a left foot, Dawkins will offer some pace and some bustle to the opposing defenders. Yeah, that's for sure. Big, strong men. Dawkins in the number 24 shirt. And there's Danian Parchment with a whistle and he sends this one off. And uh, Tivoli with Dawkins immediately trying to go through a cluster of Arnett Gardens midfielders and defenders. And not surprisingly, isn't successful there in the opening moments of the game. It's a bit heavy, Dawkins. Oh, Lance, you're kind. He did look a big lad in his high school years and certainly hasn't doesn't have the physique of a footballer oh there goes wilson with some space and doesn't get my price who reads it well a strike from distance here and uh, alex thomas the army gardens coach looking on 
intensely. Yeah, another word on Dawkins. Such a talented footballer, a really, really good striker. A good player all around, played at several positions for JC in those title-winning teams, but just seems to struggle to keep his way. There's nothing wrong with the boy's talent. He is very, very a very good footballer. I can attest to that. But physically, he's going to have a challenge producing his best because of that particular encumbrance. Thomas has straddled two roles this football season, has been head coach of the Wilmers Manning Cup team as well. Wilmers well, was knocked out of the Manning Cup, losing to St. Andrew Technical last week. Good turn there by Shavar Campbell. Fleming tries to force the ball through the middle. Arnett competent in their defense line. Reed. Well, probably four or five former UWI players on the park tonight. And UWI aren't playing. Maybe that's why they're struggling. Their best players are gone. Wilson under pressure from Flemings. Does well, turns Flemings well. Gotcha goes white to Nesbitt. Edwards goes wide. Here comes Nes Nesbet again. Reed trying to turn. Squeak. Guthrie with an effort toward goal. Flemings. Nesbet. A little bit of an inadvertent touch on the ball there from Nesbet. Gives up a goal kick. The chance was there for the first time cross. Philip Williams wanted to take a dribble and whip that one in from the byline. Miscontrol letting him down. Fairly cool night for football here and a very expectant crowd. The players also have a fairly good surface to display their skills on tonight. Davian Garrison there trying to get control of the ball. Clemmings. That's Trayvon Reed, Kingston College Manning Cup winner 2018. Jamie Robinson. Garrison can't fend off Reed, his former teammate there at UWI. Garrison and Reed just going for the ball. Reed for Arnett. Garrison for Tivoli. Here's Reed. Guthrie. Edwards. Has played well this season, Edwards. Fabian Reed sends Nesbet going. Nesbet has some room here. He was aiming for Wilson, didn't find him. <laughs> His left foot is so powerful, Al Nesbeth, almost as if he can't do subtlety. That just needed a subtle touch into the path of his teammate, but almost looked club, foot, club footed when he laid that pass on. Watch when he wields it with power, that left foot. Defenders better cover. Wilson with a strike from. Just about 24 yards out, but didn't really get around it properly. And he rules the missed opportunity there, or at least getting Nicholas Clark some work to do. Yeah, aiming for the top left-hand corner. Ended up going under it instead of, as you noted, around to bend. gets away from Nesbet. Nesbet chasing though. Puts enough pressure on, but also not legitimately says referee Parchment. There's Garrison being tracked now by Guthrie. Diving effort on goal there by Newton Sterling, but just didn't 
get close enough to the ball. This is a wonderful play from Tivoli. Fleming's his ball to Garrison is very good. And watch him square up the defender. Goes around with him. And look at this cross. Oh, Newton Sterling, those are the chances you live by, my friend. That should have been heading goal was at least. Instead, he didn't connect properly. Didn't time the header properly. And that's a missed chance. That's a glorious chance. Yeah, I think it was his arrival time there. He, he appeared to have arrived just a little bit too late. Firm, good cross in by Garrison. And now Arnett on the counter with Sims putting pressure on and forcing Flemings to give up a throw deep inside his own half. Sims man of the match last week in the 4-2 victory over Cavalier. There's Reed who was also on the score sheet. Wilson as well. Wilson, former Portmore and Cavalier player. Sims turns his man beautifully. Looking for Malcolm. Just too much weight on the pass, looking for the Arnett number 11. Yeah, that, I don't think that was the right ball either. Was played more in hope than anything else. Because Malcolm was under pressure. The defender was right on his shoulder. And there wasn't enough room between both players and the byline. High degree of difficulty in that pass. Yeah, I thought with the confidence Sims has in his uh, left foot, he may have been tempted to go at goal directly as well. Big strong Sterling, hard to get him off the ball. Oh, delightful ball in. Malcolm! Brilliant save by Clark in goal for Tivoli. Ah, shouldn't have taken that first touch to settle himself, Malcolm. Should have gone first time, and that's what the veteran, that's why his face is so made up. This was an excellent ball. Look how deep this through pass is played from. And oh, Kemal Malcolm should have gone earlier. That's a Nicholas Clark did well to close him down. Yeah. Oh, the header on goal by Simpson. He should have scored from eight yards. Offside, though. Yeah, whistle went. But I think some alarm bells in the Tivoli defense line early here, George. The Arnett Gardens team getting quite a few early looks at goal. Yeah, Christmas is coming. The Tivoli boys must be feeling benevolent. Well, their jersey looks pretty enough. <laughs> oh, delightful ball. Trayvon Reed. And now comes Dawkins. Unable to get control of the ball, and then the chance disappears. Yeah, it's a goal kick. I tell you what, the viewers should look out for some excellent back to goal play from two center forwards. You're going to see Fabian Reed. And for Arn Gardens and Newton Sterling for Tivoli Gardens. These men are experts with holding off the defender, taking that ball down and bringing others into play. And the reason I'm highlighting it is because it's a contrast. One man, big, tall and strapping Newton Sterling. Fabian Reed, a smaller man, but equally as adept at manipulating the ball from those situations. Reed. Good strong challenge from Edwards. You know some players love to dribble lance. I'll tell you more. Dawkins heads on here for Reed. Reed doesn't get proper control. And driven directly on goal there. Blocked to Roisin Smith with the right footed effort. Reed on the pressure. And he looks as, as if him, he's hurt himself. Cross inside, good one. Campbell. Goes for goal, Campbell, but tame. Neither coach will be happy with what he's seeing defensively from his team. This game is wide open. It's your typical derby game in many respects. Caution being thrown to the wind. It's all out attack. Too much, much too much weight on that. Pass aiming for Javoni Sims. I was telling you that in the same way that some players love to dribble, Tamar Edwards for Arnett Garns, the captain on the night, he absolutely loves tackling. I'd, be, I'd not be surprised if he walks around in his house tackling the furniture or family members. He just loves tackling. Gets him into trouble sometimes, but he usually gets it right. Yeah, and his role as central midfielder for Arnett Garns in the past couple of weeks that we've seen him, undeniably brilliant. For sure. The 
But the game perhaps too open for the liking of Alex Thomas. He's the home team, has his supporters here backing him. Team is a bit loose in the midfield. Tivoli getting a lot of looks. Dawkins knocked off the ball pretty easily. Guthrie. Nesbet. Guthrie wants it back and gets it. Edwards loses it. Martin helps him out, but with a foul. Can't see how that was a free kick on young Trevon Reed. Danced around his man, but the man got some of the ball. Let me see this replay again. Handed to him. Look at this nice body survey. Yeah, that's a free kick. Yeah, Reed. Very, very skillful young player. Still only 19 years old. Former Kingston College standout. And he looks as if he wants to kick himself, having earned it. Big Sterling. Very familiar to these parts. Having played at Arnold Gardens for several years probably a decade or more Reed looks as if he's going to the far post and he does Price unsuccessful with a header in the big Tivoli central defender and captain trying to make his presence felt in offense yeah Arnett are defending Newton Sterling with Jamar Martin there's a huge size difference between both men strength difference as well he's gonna win most of those battles i say that to say well, well someone will say well george seems to be suggesting that there's someone that arnold can put to match sterling's physicality there isn't that player O'Neill bigger thompson is long gone reed has some room on the right nesbet back tracking oh reed does really well here carrison Kiss with a frantic save. I thought just a little bit too much weight placed to play it on that pass to Garrison down the left channel, cutting in. Mm, over ambitious from Paul Wilson, and he apologizes to Fabian Reed. But this, neither team is playing really any midfield. It's our own open door, inviting opposing attackers to run through. Risky play here from Clark. And now they've given the ball away. Malcolm. The cross inside. Sims is there. The cool. Roshin Smith, I think he was just heading the ball back to his goalkeeper. So Tiffin is showing composure there in defense. In the end. Sterling does really well to win that header. Oh, Sims turns Kem Flemings beautifully, but Flemings keeps the pressure on. Price gets in the way. Very good defending from Flemings. Beaten but not discarded, stuck to his task and made it difficult for Sims to get the cross in. Campbell does well, keeps his balance and the ball. Poor pass though. Got three. Wilson. Oh, Wilson does well here. Still, Wilson slides the ball through to Sims. Offside. Offside. Yeah. Oh, Sims should have waited, I think. The second time, the second time in second occasion in short in a short time that Sims has been caught offside. Not good awareness from him. Campbell. Wilson goes long. Malcolm being chased here by Robinson. Robinson successful with a challenge. Good defensive work here. Tivoli now on the transition play. Campbell. Flemings. Reed. Very good with his with the ball at his feet, Reed. 
now more Tivoli players coming up in attack. Nesbeth's clearance only finds Roshane Smith. From distance, Robinson goes with a left-footed effort, but it's harmless. Yeah. Flying start to the game. Several chances. Both teams having legitimate goal-scoring opportunities. Muffing them. On it, a couple of promising plays, ending in Sims being flagged for offside. But I can't imagine either coach being happy with the defensive performance of their midfield so far. Oh, how dearly Tivoli would love to recapture some of the form at the Tony's bowling complex that they had played some years ago. You know, between 2014 and 2018, Arnett failed to beat them here. Rodriguez under pressure, but does well here, just grabs the ball away in front of the onrushing Tivoli attacker. Well, between 2014 and it was October 2018, there were no Arnett Garns victories over Tivoli here at the Tony Spalling Sports Complex. I remember that period quite well. Yeah. But Arnett have been so dominant against Tivoli in the past year and a half that those statistics seem eons away. Yellow card comes out here for the Burley Dawkins. For this challenge on the little man, Dawkins looks as if he doesn't agree with the card. Let's see what happened here. Mm. <laughs> Off camera. Yeah. So Dawkins gets the yellow card for a late challenge on the little man, Wilson. Dawkins has the tremendous honor of scoring two winners in Manning Cup finals 2015 against St. George's College and 2016 against Wilmers both times lifting Jamaica College to the Manning Cup title yeah I was there at Savannah Park when he broke St. George's College hearts 89th minute header it was oh yes it was a beautiful header across from Zavon Sewell a defender by trade who was played in midfield surprisingly by Miguel Coley and he floated a pass forward in fact it was the only pass he got right all night Lance and it was a tremendous header that was the 2015 Manning Cup final and then to show his versatility his winning strike that gave Jamaica College a 2-1 victory over Wilmers in the 2016 final was a long range right footed strike he was the Jamaica College hero then and both those seasons he just kept finding winning goals he just kept finding winning goals tremendous a player I rated very highly as a schoolboy but his weight has ballooned. Alright, it's on the attack. Reed just not getting around the shot enough, so it was a pretty tame effort on goal in the end. Clark had it easy in goal for Tivoli. Edwards, Guthrie, Wilson, Nesbitt finds Wilson again, who does really well here, he's strike a goal, I think Wilson does, oh just wide, oh that was sublime from the little man, oh my word, what a flick around that Tivoli defender, to electrify the crowd. Look at this piece of play. Oops, I'm gone. Roshane Smith left for dead. And then he goes for the spectacular curler. And the ball just wouldn't cooperate. What a delightful little player he is. Had been on the Portmore books before going to the USL Pro League in the USA for the Harrisburg City Islanders. Came back to the Premier League with Cavalier. And then joined Arnett Gardens mid-season. And he's now finding the kind of form, I think now, that saw the recruiters for Harrisburg 
get him there back in 2015. Campbell, good cross in. Ever present, Edwards gets the header out. Arnett having a lot more ball possession at the moment at 57%. Tivill is struggling to keep pace. One of the difficulties typically facing trying to contain Arnett Garns here in this fixture is the fact that Arnett have so many goal scoring names on their roster. Nine different goal scores for Arnett Garns already this season in just this their 13th game. Impressive. Good football from Arnett. Arnett enjoying themselves tonight. Nesbet. Oh, that was Fabian Reed shoved over there. Pretty violently by Jabour Johnson, his former teammate at Arnett Gardens. Yeah, he knows his runs. This was a good ball by Nesbet, but tracked all the way by Johnson. I agree with the referee, that's not a foul. He wasn't? Nah. But he didn't get ball and he knocked the player over, George. Yeah, well, it's a contact sport and the, Reed knew the contact was coming. Almost mm. like Phil Jones from Manchester United on Sunday. <laughs> Felt the contact and threw himself down like a doll. Okay. And the referee ignored him correctly. Arnett looking stylish tonight. No goals to show for it though. Wilson breaks free. Malcolm wants it and gets it. this rate, it seems just a matter of time that Arnett will score. Nesbitt goes for goal, <laughs> but that's way off target. Yeah, he wants to make the Sports Max Zone class moments three weeks in a row, Al Nesbitt. That was highly ambitious. I never fault players for doing things like that. He's trying to score. Yes, he remembered his left-footed strike last week against Cavalier, which was the goal of the night from the edge of the 18. He didn't connect that one. Not even 5% as well. Midway the first half. Martin. Wow, gives the ball away. Garrison. Good cross. Too close to goalkeeper Rodriguez. Yeah, Sterling was running back post, the cross came near post. Here's Guthrie, the number 17 for Arnett Gardens, has kept his place here after getting his first Premier League start against Harbourview two Monday nights ago. But did well enough to get a start again against Cavalier last Sunday. And keeps his spot tonight as Vishnu Harris, their on the books star player sits on the bench i tell you what lance this little man has been having a ball against roshan smith who's been tasked with picking him up as we look at Vishnal harris sitting in the shadows paul wilson has been having a running battle with smith and has been coming out on top yeah he has an unfamiliar position Vishnal harris has on the bench usually he's on the bench it's because he's not 100 percent fit Fit enough to play now, I think, but the team's been doing really, really well. And now he's, for the moment at least, playing the super sub role. Reed's cross. Oh, Shafar miss kicks the ball. And Kamal Malcolm knocked off the ball after doing some fancy stuff. And Fleming's just kept his eye on the ball and took it away from him. Good defending. Not buying the histrionics. Yeah. Robinson's good pass up to Garrison. Oh, Garrison. Well, I thought he was getting by Reed, his former UWI teammate, but Reed won it in the end. Yeah. It's been a good first 25 minutes. Yeah, and a lot of willingness for players to take each other on. And Jamaican football fans love to see that. Garrison and Fabian Reed battling for the ball. Referee <laughs> intervenes. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, and here's that, that toss up on the ball. And you can see the familiarity between Jabir Johnson, the Tivoli Gardens centre half, and Fabian Reed, the Arnett Gardens attacker. Johnson gets to him very quickly. Applying maximum pressure, not allowing him to turn or lay the ball off. That comes from years of training with him and knowing what his strengths are. Arnett patient, not seeing too many openings in a cluttered midfield so they start the play over from the back and now Nesbitt has it on the left Guthrie Johnson reads the play well Trayvon Reed there goes Garrison with room on the left Robinson goes further left and wants it poor but Edwards tackled successfully and the referee is awarding a free kick now to who yeah it's a sh uh, Edwards shoved Garrison in the face after dispossessing him Garrison was dragging him back yeah but Garrison's play was a yellow card offense as well I thought absolutely listen this is what happened yeah wins the ball runs away from him now look at Garrison grab the, the arm and he flushes him off I don't think that's a yellow card Mr. no referee and it wasn't to the face either he misled the referee. He just shoved him in the chest. Yeah, well, his, his hand got into his face, yeah. Hey, what are you saying? Let me go. Oh. Nesbeth is down injured. So yellow card confirmed there for Tamar Edwards, the Arnett Gardens captain. A player with a lot of intensity. Nesbeth Town looking to be bothered by a apparently a hip injury or certainly in the upper thigh area. So the Arnett fans have been delighted by the form of their team in recent weeks. 4-2 over Cavalier, 3 nil over Harbourview 2 2 with Dunbar Holden. So they've been scoring goals, this Arnett Gardens team. And Nesbitt doesn't look good at the moment. I'm wondering if he has a dead leg because. Let's see how he walks. There's a man warming up furiously on the sidelines, an Arnett Gardens substitute. They say those initials which usually correspond to the initials of the person wearing them, wearing the shirt. Not so tonight for the Tivoli Gardens team. It's in tribute to their former chairman, Edward Philip George Siaga, former prime minister, former minister of finance, who's no longer with us. Yeah, Nesbeth looks to be in some trouble. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't look good. And the substitution is being prepared, I can tell you. Yeah, he, he isn't able to put any pressure at all on that right leg. And it's Ricardo Oldham, who looks as if he's getting stripped and ready to come in. Yes, number 26. Yeah, so Oldham may not be as strong as a straight defender as, as Nesbeth is, but he's a good ball handler and uh, without question a, a better distributor of the ball so Arnett offensively could benefit from Oldham replacing Nesbitt here let's see what happens yeah that looks as if he tore a calf at the thigh muscle beg your pardon or pulled a thigh muscle well there you go pulled tear looks to be a thigh complaint for Al Nesbitt which probably will keep him out a few weeks so Ricardo Oldham has worn the captain's armband for Arnett Gardens so far this season. Indra kept him out a couple of weeks ago. Now he's back in business. The former Camperdown star Manning Cup player. Reed challenged successfully there by Johnson. So far, Johnson is doing a tremendous job on Fabian Reed, I must note. Excellent pass there from Trayvon. Reed to Dawkins. Campbell. Flemings. He wants some passing options, Flemings. 
has done a lot of overlapping so far, Kamara Flemings, the vice captain of this Tivoli team, up and down this right hand side. As we look at Sims from Arnett Gardens, breathing heavy. It's a cool night here, as Nance noted. Good night for football. Flemings throws near, and uh, Campbell has won a corner here for Tivoli, the ball coming off Ramon Reed. All right, so watch what Arnett Garns does. Um, watch how Arnett Garns goes about defending Newton Sterling from this corner. Jamar Martin picking him up, but he'll need help. Ramon Reed goes across, so it's with two men trying to make Sterling's life difficult. Martin has now switched, so it's now Reed versus Sterling. Can Robinson find him? To the near post he goes. Garrison. Too much weight on that cross, and Dawkins unable to outrun Edwards. Johnson under pressure. Does really well there. Having a big game tonight, Chavo Johnson. Yeah, hasn't put a foot wrong so far. Yeah, at his former home ground here at the Tony Spalling Sports Complex, having played on championship winning teams for Arnett Garns here back in 2015 and 2017. Yeah, Fleming's caught late there. Free kick to Tivoli inside their own half. Here's that play. Yeah, just Sims just stepping in the instep there of Fleming's. Johnson with a free kick for. Tivoli Gardens. Reed loses it. Fabian Reed now has it. Malcolm. Sims. Ramon Reed goes darting to the left, but Sims goes inside. Now Reed. Good cross. Not surprisingly, Sleek and Stylish tonight are in front after 33 minutes. That was too easy from a, from a Tivoli defensive perspective. But from an attacking perspective from Arnett Gardens, as you said, Lance, you described it perfectly. Sims waited for the overlapping run. Reed sets himself, fashioned the left-footed cross, and nobody saw the little blur of black and red steaming in, a.k.a. Kemal Malcolm. And his header was sure. Look at how many green shirts are in the defensive position. The captain Barrington Price turns away in disgust at how simple his defense line has been breached. And I was just about to remark, Lan, sorry, I was just about to remark that Ramon Reed has replaced Nesbeth 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 on left the left back. Yeah. Absolutely. And Oldham has gone over to the right back position. So Reed, Ramon Reed, making his presence felt on the left flank here with a delightful cross inside that was perfectly struck inside. Firm. And Malcolm just needed to steer the ball in. Sims. Campbell is there, putting pressure on Sims. Sims's cross is over hit. But Edwards retreats. Fabian Reed was struck in the head there by his nemesis, Javier Johnson. Javier Johnson went up with Johnson, him. yeah, it was Johnson that went up with him. So Kenal Malcolm turned 30 years old last week, Tuesday. And uh, is enjoying goals on either a weekend of his birthday. <laughs> He's very good friends with the dance hall star Idonia Lance. Has been mentioned in a couple of songs. <laughs> I call him Tull, a standout Manning Cup winner for St. George's College. Uh, Reed there 
knocked over by the big strong Barrington Price Malcolm scored 26 or 25 goals in there to the Georges College Manning Cup championship winning season back in 2008 and has not been delivering as prolifically for Arnett Garns in the past couple of seasons as he had four seasons ago 58% ball possession here for Arnett Gardens who are in control Jerome might often complain about his work ethic at training that's one of the reasons why he didn't start him in more games but he was very useful and critical to Arnett Garns' most recent title successes well, maybe George is spending too much time with Idonia, who has a nightlife as an entertainer. <laughs> and if he's his good friend, <laughs> he may be out at nights instead of getting enough sleep. What I tell you is that I, I want to see them together in the days. Not that I would see them in the nights, because <laughs> I'm not around that kind of circle at nights. Yes. But I can tell you, if Kamal Malcolm finds his goal-scoring form back, with his speed and confidence on the ball, Arnett could be setting themselves up here for a very, very good run at the championship. And don't forget the last Arnett Garns title success. Don't forget the partnership struck between that man, Kemal Malcolm, and Vishnu Harris. It was almost telepathic. You'd see Malcolm sprinting in on an outside right position, and all Harris would do would just be finding him. Long ball on the floor, long ball in the air. He'd run onto it. Do something fancy to get rid of a defender and score. They were devastating that year together. Yeah. Third game in a row now that he has scored. Kamal Malcolm scored against Harborview two weeks ago. Scored against Cavalier last week. And he's on target again tonight. Oldham. Yeah, we spoke about Oldham's distributing skills, and the Malcolm is fouled. Robust challenger from Jamie Robinson, who decided that he would not allow Malcolm the comfort of just gliding by him. Yeah, he had to foul him, so he brought out the hip check. Malcolm pulls him in and then turns on the afterburners. I should have caught his foot. A necessary foul from Jim Robinson, from a Tivoli perspective. I remember Trevor Jumpy Harris Lance, the father of Wolde Harris, talking about Thierry Henry and his change of pace and how it was so crucial in Henry's overall armory as a striker. And it was a change of pace from Malcolm that caused Robinson to have to fall just now. Yeah. Robinson's yellow card confirmed. Harnett looking for more goals here tonight. Garrison gets there first and gives up a corner. So we've had like three or four yellow cards already tonight. That's pretty much on the strike rate for referee Damian Parchment. 34 yellow cards he has given after 10 matches in the Premier League. <laughs> Mark Golding, the Member of Parliament for this constituency, Southern St. Andrew, and the Chairman of the Honor Grounds Football Club, going through his bag of peanuts, which reminds me, Lance, where is Wayne Lewis? Well, maybe our cameraman can find him. Johnson, as Tivoli are looking to counter-attack here. Oh, brilliant there by McGregor. Oh, it does really well there. This Arnett team looks on song tonight. Oldham. Wilson. Alex Thomas, their new coach, a, a former Arnett Gardens player himself. And the brother of Shavar Thomas, who captained Portmore to Premier League title successes back to back 2017 or 2018 and 2019. What you should do, my friend, is tell us how many former Manning Cup champions are on display in this game because I tell you, there's a lot, there are a lot. Yeah, strike on goal by Sterling. Has to be a penalty. 
or was it the free I think, kick? I think Sterling fouled him. Yeah, I, th I think. No, no Jamar Martin gets the card because he almost took sh Sterling's shorts off. Was gazing, Lance. Was, that was dilly dallying with the ball. Sterling closed him down quickly. Didn't expect that burst of pace on the big man. Look at him right here. Took his eye off it. Sterling will always win that battle. Muscles him down. Muscles him out of the action, rather. And I told you, Martin tried to take Sterling's shorts. <laughs> yeah, but Sterling did kind of shove him out of the way as well. Well, Sterling was looking to get to the ball. Uh, Martin couldn't defuse. So Sterling could only go through. And in his desperation, very lucky. I thought it was in the box, but the referee says it's just outside. And the replay confirmed it. So Tivoli, just three and a half minutes of normal time remaining for the half, having an opportunity here to get back into the game. Problems here for Arnett. This wall will have to have at least six players in it, I think. There's Rodriguez. The 19-year-old goalkeeper for Arnett Gardens, trying to satisfy himself that he has his wall properly set. Parchment is insisting that the wall is 10 yards off, as they should be. What would you do from here, Whitaker? Would you go for subtlety, or would you go for the brute force of Newton Sterling's left foot? I think I'd go for the brute force, because if he tries to go for subtle, subtlety, the, the margin for error is really great because there isn't much distance for the ball to to dip after it goes by. Robinson looks as if he'll strike it. Or will it be Reed? Jamie Robinson looks poised to strike it left-footed. A five-man wall set up here, and it's Sterling, really. It just grazes the crossbar. And disappointment, and the Arnett fans have no sympathy for the ex-Arnett man. Yeah. If Sterling were to strike it, as I suspected, he would have to go for the top right-hand corner. That's what he did. Ooh, didn't miss by much. Did not miss by much. And you saw what he was aiming for there, Sterling, who I think left Arnett Carnes because he was dissatisfied with the amount of playing time he, he was getting. Back in the 2016-2017 season, he was... The second leading scorer for Arnett Gardens with uh, seven goals behind Fabian Reed's eight goals. But then the year after that, he didn't get a lot of playing time. And then the following year, even less. Now he has gone to Tivoli. Sterling doing some captaining, Lance. Just calling his midfielders to take a few steps forward to... Put some pressure on the Arnett guards to ensure that the goalkeeper went along with his kick. Wilson robbed of the ball. Roshin Smith challenged here by Oldham. So there goes Trayvon Reed. Oh, well tackled here by Edwards, who is fouled. But Arnett have possession of the ball, so referee Parchment allows the play to go on. There's Malcolm. Just heard us the challenge there from Garrison. Roshane Smith. This is Robinson. Just nudged by Wilson. Referee Parchment spots it. We're in the final minutes of the first half. Maybe just a little bit time time to be added on for stoppages. There was that Nesbet injury that held the game up a bit. Flemings. Malcolm comes back to put pressure on. Oh. Fleming's tackles with a lot of aggression. Two-footed. Almost a scissor tackle from Kemal Malcolm. Yeah. But love his commitment to the cause. When your striker runs back so deep and does this, that's a dangerous tackle. <laughs> Caught ball, but yeah, lucky for Fleming's that he did. Confirmation that two minutes are being added on for stoppages here in the first half, so... 22 seconds of that already expired so just over a minute and a half remaining here in the half for Arnett to protect the one nil lead they earned with the Kemal Malcolm header from the Ramon Reed left-sided cross 
Flemings with a free kick here for Tivoli on the right. Good kick across the box. Malcolm miss kicks and the deflection into the goal. Price, the captain, I think has steered it in for his third goal of the season. And would you believe it? The central defender is Tivoli's leading goal scorer. Wow. So the first ball from the corner kick won by Tivoli. Then the ball pinballed around. A bit scrappy in the end. Tivoli man won that header. Malcolm didn't clear. And Javier Johnson's wild strike off the head of his central defensive partner. The Arnett Gardens players appealing handball. I don't know of whom. No hand involved. That's a legitimate goal. And I tell you what, Lance. On the run of the first half, on how the ball has run for both teams, I think Tivoli deserve one goal for their first half efforts, I would say. Yeah, they've worked hard for sure. But I know that Arnett Garns will be very, very disappointed that they gave up the advantage that they had here. They had more time on the ball, Arnett. Reed shoved off the ball. Robinson puts the pressure on. Garrison. Guthrie tackling Price is doing for Tivoli where what his attacking players aren't able to do. But he can't be pleased, Alex Thomas. Uh, two minutes expired. Referee Parchment calls a halt to the end of the first half. That produced a pair of goals, one each from the two teams here. Malcolm giving Arnett Gardens the lead, and just a shade before the halftime break. Barrington Price, the big central defender and captain for Tivoli Gardens, pulls one back, and the game is now 1 1. Yeah, Price berating a couple of his teammates. The Arnett Gardens players are putting them pulling together in a huddle to talk about what happened in those first 45 minutes. The Tivoli players are now forming their own huddle. He will be relieved that he has priority going into that half time. His team did some things very well in the first half, some things not so well. The same can be said for Alex Thomas's team in red and black. Yes, so after 45 minutes then, Red Stripe Football Mondays tonight coming from the Tony Spalling Sports Complex. A stoppage time goal from Barrington Price for Tivoli Gardens here in the first half. Wipes out the 34th minute strike from Kamal Malcolm and Arnett and Tivoli are locked at 1-1 on Monday Night Football. Back with the halftime highlights. And we have had a fairly entertaining first half here that produced a couple of goals with Arnett Gardens and Tivoli Gardens locked at 1-1 here at half time in fairly cool conditions here but Arnett had a lot of time on the ball today although it was uh, Tivoli that uh, made some of the early going offensively. Yeah Garrison will get across in here looking for Newton starting at the back post he gets there the big man but somehow he messed his header up I thought that he arrived late but I think he was there well he was stretching at the end. So, yeah, he did get there. He did get his body in the right position. Look at this through pass from Paul Wilson. Come on, Malcolm, who must score. Took it wide, trying to get around the keeper, looking for a better angle. But Clark saved with his feet, a la David De Gea, to preserve the clean sheet. And then Nesbeth, who went off with an injury. Nice skill by Paul Wilson. Fix it around Rashane Smith, looking for the top left-hand corner. Can't find it, though. That ball refusing to cooperate when instructed to bend by the little man. And then here they come. Sims goes to his left for his overlapping option. Ramon Reed takes a, a step, a touch to study him, Teddy himself. Getting my tongue twisted there, but Kemal Malcolm didn't fluff his lines. Ran through a sea of green. They invited him to breach the net. And he obliged. Meat and drink. 
for the Honored Gardens front man for 1 0. Then McGregor back to Jamar Martin. Oh, he was dozing. Bundled out of the way by Newton Sterling, who had his shorts grabbed by Martin. Just on the edge of the 18 yard box, referee Damian Parchman says, Free kick which Sterling takes and just misses that top right hand corner. A tremendous blast. And then this free kick from Fleming's first header. Didn't clear it. Arnett Garn's defense. And Jabir Johnson, his wild effort, smacked into the head of his central defensive partner, Barrington Price, who steered it home for 1 1. That was on the stroke of half time. Arnett, not enough time to respond to that setback. Yeah, fine reflex effort there from Barrington Price because the ball was struck pretty pretty firmly in his direction and he just twisted his body and just angled the ball in for the equalizing goal seven attempts on goal by Arnett Garns three of them on target five attempts on goal by Tivoli two of them on target 11 fouls in the match so far six of them to Tivoli players and we have had four yellow cards issued by referee Parchment Arnett Garns having a lot more ball possession at 59 percent and would be disappointed that they haven't gone into the halftime break with the advantage but uh, that is the story here at halftime with uh, Arnett Garns and uh, Tivoli Garns locked at 1-1 one, one. or my 90 at halftime is with the 20 year old former Charlie Smith captain and a new midfield general in the Arnett Garns roster Romeo Guthrie Romeo Guthrie Arnett Garns FC Red Chair my 90 stand up for your strife Football means the world to me Um, I've been playing football more than 10 years now. Well, my inspiration was my dad and my uncle. Football means a lot to the community. It um, motivates and encourages youngsters to be what they want to be and encourage others to come out and enjoy a game. I attend Charles Smith High School. Um, the positives about Charles Smith High School that you have students who work hard as much, like three times harder than others, and strive for their goal. On a regular day, I, I more like to be voluntary with my grandmother or my friends to do some additional work or to find something positive to stream my mind from doing something negative. My game is more of a attacking. Um, to create chances and score goals. My dream job would to be an entrepreneur, to create my own business and create cha um, job opportunities for others, to be my own businessman. So, Romeo Guthrie appears to have his head on. UEFA Champions League football coming up on Sportsmax 2 Wednesday afternoon, 12.30, 1.30 Eastern Caribbean time. Valencia will be at home to Chelsea. Barcelona, former champions up against Dortmund. This is 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock Eastern Caribbean time, also on Sportsmax 2 Wednesday. Cricket, second test. Australia, Pakistan, the Aussies, 1 0 in front. Thursday, 10 30 p.m., Sportsmax, 11 30 p.m. in the Eastern Caribbean. And then the Manning Cup final, Friday, 5 p.m., 6 p.m. ECT, JC against the Stats on Sportsmax. Ben Francis Cup final on Saturday, 2 p.m., 3 p.m. in the Eastern Caribbean. Garvey Maceo, the Cubans, against BB Coke. The Costa Cup final on Saturday, 4.30 p.m., 5.30 p.m. in the Eastern Caribbean. Dintil, the team from Northern St. Catherine, against Mighty Clarendon College. And the NBN Sports match, Saturday, 5 p.m., 6 p.m. in the Eastern Caribbean. Sacramento against Denver Nuggets. And more from the NBA, the Mavericks, Luka Doncic, hot hotter than fire against the broiling hot LeBron James and the LA Lakers 4 p.m. 5 p.m. in the EZT and Red Stripe Football Mondays back at Arnett Gardens next week Mount Pleasant the visitors 7 30 p.m. is when the pregame show starts DeWine Smith Tivoli Gardens my 90 to the break Darwin Smith, Tivoli Gardens, Red Stripe, my 90, stand up for your strike. 
football, everything. <laughs> everything. Football is the reason why I can articulate myself as I am today. It gave me an education. I'm from the inner city community and that was my way out, so to speak. From Jesus as a child. I've been playing as long as I can remember. Well, I'm from a, I'm from a home where football was like a natural instinct. You know, it was second nature. You kick box, you kick bottle, you play with the coconut. Whatever it is that you could kick, that was the first thing. A lot, a lot. Um, right now, Leon Bailey is from my community as well, in Cassava Peace. So he is a uh, he personifies what it means to overcome hardships, likewise myself. You know, so football does a lot in terms of providing employment, in terms of taking you out of trouble, you know. It's just a way of life. I attended Middlebrook High School and then I attended Calabar High School. You know, Italos, Italos, Vestra Splendid, Let Your Light So Shine for Middlebrook High School and Utmost for the Highest at Calabar High School and these two mottos personify who I am as an individual. You know, always strive your very best by working hard and dedicating your time and then always strive for the very best irrespective of whatever hardships that you might be going through. I try to be a rounded individual so I read a lot, um, I play pool, I love pool, I listen to music and to just get rest because I live a hectic schedule so Every time I get to spend with the family and just relax, that's what I really do. Uh, I don't have one particular side, but I think my stronger suits are I'm a very good pass at the ball and I'm a goal scorer in midfield. I'm not playing football to be the CEO of my own company. I'm in finance, so I'm in road to that right now. So that is always a plan in action. Red Stripe, my 90. Stand up for your strike. Red Stripe Football Mondays tonight coming from the Tony Spalling Sports Complex where the home team Arnett Gardens are battling this team, Tiffany Gardens. And uh, the score at the moment 1 1 after that Barrington Price strike in stoppage time wiped out the 34th minute lead that Arnett Gardens had achieved through the Kamal Malcolm close range header from a Ramon Reed cross. There's Omar Davies, former finance minister and former chairman of the Arnett Garns Club as well. He has handed over duties to Mark Golden. Yeah, also former member of parliament for this constituency, Southern St. Andrew. Well, we're talking about footballers now and Kamal Malcolm, the man wearing number 11 for Arnett Garns, had a busy first half. He is a busy player by nature. Not just scored the goal, but was involved in action at both ends. Slipped through by Paul Wilson when we thought he would score. Dithered and thwarted by the goalkeeper, Nicholas Clark. Robbed of possession there, but then he ran through invitingly into the six-yard box. And it steered home Ramon Reed's cross 
left Jamie Robinson up before being brought down by the defender. So just bits of what Kemal Malcolm did in that first half and the, his manager, his coach, will be looking for more of the same. What about Newton Sterling, though? The big man was on the end of a very nice cross early in the game. This is Darian Garrison finding Sterling. And then he bulldozes his way past Jamar Martin and his hold down. And from the resultant free kick, he didn't miss by much. So had two good chances. Well, the free kick, much more difficult for opposition than the header. But just couldn't shuffle his feet quickly enough to get his body into place to steer home that header from Garrison's cross. So big Newton Sterling in the number 15 shirt for Tivoli Gardens, enjoying playing time here with Tivoli Gardens, which had deserted him in his last days at Arnett Gardens. A former national player himself as well, big Newton Sterling. Eight national caps with four goals as well, was part of the Jamaica Reggae Boys championship winning team at the 2005 Digicel Caribbean Cup, as it was then called. So Arnett will try now to restore the lead they had earned up to 34 minutes and lost when Price scored for Tivoli. Robinson does really well here, but Edwards is going back at him. Garrison has work to do. McGregor goes in chase. Corner to Tivoli. So Tivoli looking very assertive here in the opening minutes of the second half and they'll feel they can take something from this game based on the strength of their attacking play in that first half Gotter tries to get in the way Wilson the speedy Malcolm has acres of room on the right Reed wants the ball in the middle Malcolm's pass needed to be better it's Trayvon Reed now but he's fouled yeah, it's been an elusive dribbler so far in this game, Trayvon Reed. The Arnett Gardens players finding it difficult to stop him legally. He debuted for Kingston College in Manning Cup football at, I think, 14 or 15 years old, Trayvon Reed. Always a good ball handler. Shavar Campbell gets close to the ball. And Rodriguez with a brave challenge. And a winning challenge as well. What a clever dummy from Donovan Dawkins, though. Froze the Arnett Gardens defenders who thought he was going to trap that ball. Garrison with room for Tivoli. Wanted the ball back, but Reed didn't look in his direction. Changes the angle from left to right. Flemings. Reed, oh, he just tried to scoop the ball over there looking for Dawkins. Who acknowledged the idea. Yeah, going for the cheeky play there, Trayvon Reed. Very, very dangerous player with the ball at his feet. Man down for Under Gardens. That looks to be in some pain here for Arnett. <laughs> Fleming's the typically left to the back exchanging some words there with Alex Thomas, the Arnett coach. Shepard Johnson with a big high clearance upfield. McGregor. Dawkins. Knocks Edwards over. There's Dawkins, wants to get to the ball, but just climbs all over Edwards. Oldham. Edwards. Late challenge from Garrison, and the yellow card comes out. Fifth of the match. Yeah, not a necessary yellow card for Garrison. You concede those in a in dangerous positions for your team when you're trying to halt a quick transition, quick counter attack. 
But at that point on the half line, nah. Always felt Garrison was underrated as a UWI player, Lance. Not fully appreciated, but he was very good for them in the time he spent yeah. with the Mona based team. Oh, delightful ball in. Sims hustle off the ball by Flemings. But Reed with a perfectly weighted pass through the defense. Arnett disappointed that he didn't make more of that. Wow, Sims got his feet mixed up. I don't know how he did it. Here he is again. Under pressure, Sims. And again, tumbles over and loses the ball. Wow, Fabian Reed just seemed to take a breath and wait for Sims to get into position. Look at this from the front man. Nice turn. And just, just the, the, the little hesitation there. And Sims' first touch, awful. Credit to Flemings for putting the pressure on as well. Edwards. Tries his header out, only finds Guthrie. Guthrie again. Oldham. Edwards. Off target cross. It's gone and Malcolm for Arnett and Price for Tivoli have been the headline makers with goals tonight so far. Oh, delightful ball in. Reed chasing but didn't get to it. Now Garrison with a chance to get a counter attack going. Reed, the back heel. Malcolm! Oh, he'd be disappointed with that. The clever back heel from Reed sent him on. He wasn't able to keep the effort down. Yeah, his left foot, not his stronger, not the stronger of the of his feet. Look at this. Everybody knew this was gonna go into his path on the back heel. It was well choreographed. Defense could do nothing about it. And poor execution from Kemal Malcolm, even though he's your weaker foot, could have steadied himself for a better effort. Got three. Wilson's delightful ball four. Malcolm has pace, but so do does Robinson. Wilson. Wilson just spring a couple of his long passes off target now yeah. was aiming there for Sims <laughs> yeah lip readers can figure out what the gentleman in the cap said a few frames ago So Tiffany, as we had said, did suffer a 4 0 loss at the start of the season on the 1st of September to UWI. And uh, that included, I forgot, had lost seven of the 12 matches coming into tonight's fixture. Only two wins so far this season. So their form hasn't been good. But he made the point at the start that their losses have all been by just one goal. They lost 1-0 to Arnett back on September 8. They did draw 1-1 with Portmore. Lost 2-1 to Waterhouse. They lost 1-0 to Tivoli. Lost 2-1 to Humberland. Whistle. Free kick to... Tivoli as I think Flemings and, and, and Sims right, coming some together. Studs, yeah, yeah. I think some studs there came up. 
Now they aren't players being penalized for it. Yeah. Lee coming in there with that was Sims coming in there with studs. Yeah. And, uh, was kicked for his troubles. Yeah. But he committed the first foul. That's it. To use your team, your term, George, they haven't been spanked this Tivoli team, even though they've had seven defeats coming into tonight's fixture. So they would want to feel that, you know, tweaks and a, a little bit more efficiency in their game could turn their form around. Hmm. Vishen and Harris warming up for Arnett Gardens. Maybe around right about the hour mark, you'll see him. Yeah. Seems with the overhead clearance, but only as far as. Roshane Smith. Oh, Trayvon Reed breaks free. Oh, delightful work from Reed. Brilliant save. The rebound. Garrison on target. Tivoli up by two goals to one. Wow. I did say in the first half, Tivoli were full value for that 1 1 scoreline at the interval. And here they come. It was poor goalkeeping. And we see Jamar Martin giving his goalkeeper a round of applause, trying to encourage him. But this was awful goalkeeping. Got two hands to the ball and then inexplicably dropped it. Reed, an elusive dribbler all evening. And how Henrik Rodriguez dropped that ball right at his feet into the grateful path of Garrison. Wow. Unacceptable. Garrison gets his second goal of the season. And the goal there made though by Trayvon Reed, who dribbles skillfully into the box, struck at his former Kingston College teammate and goalkeeper, Chadim Rodriguez, who failed to hold it. And Garrison was right in spot to capitalize on the rebound. So Tivoli now are in front. Odds had every heavily favored in Arnett Gardens victory tonight. And right now they have a recovery job to stage. Now what do we say about Derby games? Form goes through the window. The goalkeepers, the technique he used to collect that ball was absolutely poor and begging for the outcome that resulted, that ensued, that the ball fell from his grasp. Tivoli looking to go further ahead. And several light green shirts in the box waiting for opportunities. McGregor shoves Garrison over. No call from referee Parchment. Johnson. One of the strongest parts of Newton Sterling's game is to head passes on to his fellow attacking players, which is what he tried to do just then. Malcolm struck in the face. Edwards has room to take the ball. Wilson. Good cross from Wilson. Sims with a strike just over the top. Two bites at the tree for Arnett Gardens. They couldn't find the back of the net. Not a bad effort there from Sims, who is a bit more proficient with his right foot, I think, his left foot, I think, than his right. So that effort with the right boot wasn't bad. This was an excellent cross from Paul Wilson. Malcolm, not tall enough to get the right connection. And then the follow up, the second phase. Sims couldn't keep it beneath the bar. Williams, head coach of this Tivoli Gardens team. He's been in some conversations on the phone there on the sidelines. Oh, there goes Reed once again, but he over dribbles. 
course, Glendon Admiral Bailey of Dancehall fame is now the new technical director of this Tivoli Gardens team. Not seen him at the park tonight. He must be at home watching it on TV. That's what the NFL coaches do. Someone sits up on high and the coach is always wired yeah so Tivoli trying to turn their form around two wins three draws and seven defeats in the 12 games that they have played before tonight i told you about vision and harris warming up before well his introduction has been accelerated by the fact that arnett find themselves behind yeah Sims fights hard for the ball here and wins it. Ramon Reed. Price with a clearance. Well, the Tivoli fans over the past couple of seasons have not had a lot to cheer about. Their seventh place finish in the regular season last year was their worst finish in the past decade after their well since their 2011 triumph and they were on course last year Tivoli to making the the playoffs but then suffered from wretched form in the third round here's Oldham going forward Malcolm oh it's onto the post the goalkeeper badly out of position there Clark and almost paid the price yeah it was a miss kick but Kemal Malcolm was trying to find the low cross to Fabian Reed rushing towards the near post. Got his kick wrong. The goalkeeper got his interception wrong as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 it almost was a comical goal. Right. Yeah, the goalkeeper really badly positioned there. The, the near post completely uncovered. We've been talking about Arnett's record and Tivoli's record, Lance, and you've been saying a lot about the historical results between both these teams. But one thing that must be said, Arnett's record of coming from behind to win football games in recent seasons, not good. Yeah. Ramon Reed goes in the book for hauling down Donovan Dawkins. Yeah. The sixth yellow card of the night, is it? Correct, you are. That makes it 40 yellow cards issued in this is 11th game that he's officiating in tonight, Damian Parchment. Three for each team. And Reed exchanges words here with Dawkins. He looks at the moment more like an NFL player than a football player. Yeah, look at Reed climbing all over Dawkins. Oh, that's why he got the card, because I was wondering, I didn't see a foul in the initial challenge, but it was a stamp as that Dawkins rolled. And that's the right call by the referee. Harris is ready to come in for Arnett Garns. Let's see who gets the hook. And it's Newton Sterling who has an opportunity to strike a goal here for Tivoli from a free kick position that we've seen him score countless times from but it's him that struck the free kick and a late challenge there coming from Edwards who has committed many fouls tonight and who has a yellow card already so he'd better be careful Harrington Price perhaps pointing that out to the referee that this man is in the book he needs to go. Yeah. Reed striking the ball at goal there and trying to take the rebound. And wow, that was a pretty reckless challenge there from. Yeah, that that certainly that certainly could have been a yellow card infringement as well. And this is why I like how football is because it's a conscientious decision from a practical decision, beg your pardon, from Danian Parchment. You spoil the game when you give a player a second yellow card and, and an ensuing red for this. He went for the ball for sure, but it was reckless because it was late. Yes. 
under normal so, circumstances, so to be honest, that is a yellow card offence. Yeah, yeah, and to be honest, if he got a yellow card on that, I don't think he could complain. Four-man wall set up here. So in the space of two minutes, typically with free kicks from close range, this time, oh, Trayvon Reed goes to the near post, and the ball curls just a little bit too much for him. And the save by... But it was going Rick behind. Who covered, yeah, he, he, but he, he wanted to make sure. Yeah, he was going into, it was going into the side netting, but Rodriguez, especially after dropping the ball earlier on, that resulted in the Davian Garrison goal. He probably doesn't want to take any chances now and has probably lost a little bit of confidence as well. Yeah. Midway in the second half. I did think the young man, Guthrie, didn't catch the eye in this game as he did in his Premier League debut against Harborview Lands, but that's to be expected. He's only a young man. He's going to have fluctuations in performances. He's replaced by one of Arnett's best players. So, Vishnu Harris, Arnett's leading goal scorer with four goals so far this season. Tivoli to the far post and Rodriguez with a vital punch out. Flemings with a challenge to keep the pressure on Arnett. And Reed gives up a corner, so a good passage of play now for Tivoli Gardens. And they're enjoying it, you can see. It's very brave from the goalkeeper just now to go in among flying bodies. But then again, he's the only one permitted to use both hands. Jamie Robinson. He's going to strike this left-footed free kick. And he has five green shirts for Tivoli to aim at in the box. And the players are scampering all over the place. Olam gets the header out. Shamar Campbell. Here comes Vishnu Harris now, but Campbell is gaining a lot of ground. Sends Malcolm going. Malcolm waiting for some support in the middle. Excellent from Roshane Smith. Excellent coverage. And Smith doing really, really well here, Roshane, former UWI captain. And was a part of that UWI team that re reached as far as the semi-final playoffs two seasons ago. Yeah, where he had a very good record on the penalty spot. I think he's got about six penalties, yeah. or maybe seven. Sims, good corner. Clark gets the punch out in goal for Tivoli Gardens. Reed knocked over, but regains his balance. Well, the referee apparently sees nothing on that play, although Trayvon Reed thinks he was fouled. Not a good cross from Vishnil Harris, but here comes Arnett again. Good work there by Garrison, and now Reed being chased here by Edwards. Smith. Robinson. Knocked over by Oldham. So Arnett beginning to go a little ragged now yeah. in their defensive third. Yeah. And the Damari Deacon is warming up for them. Jeremy and Teddy Johnson warming up for Tivoli Gardens as we look at Peter Prendergast, former FIFA referee, in the stands. Free kick to Tivoli Gardens. <laughs> so Arnett on song in the first half with Romeo Guthrie and Paul Wilson and Malcolm knocking the ball around. That advantage has now gone. I could say completely because they are trailing. Oh, the shot from distance from Dawkins. But Rodriguez is good on the near post. There has to be an infringement. Has to be. Yeah, the ball crashing there into the back of Big Sterling. Yeah, there it is again. 
there's the earlier effort from Dawkins. Oh, delightful ball in. Sims! Offside for the third time this game. Wow. Sims runs into an offside position when presented with a goal scoring opportunity. So Arnett thought they had the equalizer there. Well, that was a delightful pass, wasn't it, for Sims to run onto? Fantastic. Shane Smith looking a relieved man. May have been the player who was caught, but then he'll tell you that, well, I knew what I was doing. I knew I was playing him onside, offside. Yeah, there's the header on. Dawkins getting there. No! What a goal! Tivoli in front by three goals to one. And Arnett are in strife at home at the Tony Spalding Sports Complex. Dawkins gets his second goal of the season. And Tivoli have taken full control. There's nothing like a plan that comes together. Your two center forwards combining, doing exactly what you want them to do. You want you and Sterling to be flashing those headers onto the onrushing players from midfielder onto his strike partner that's exactly what he did didn't even have to jump the big man just nudged it into the path of donovan dawkins who overpowered out sprinted ramon reed got it onto his favorite right foot he was not gonna miss from there it's something we had said just about 10 minutes ago george that sterling just have the expertise to just head those nutted high balls on nodded high balls onto his his attacking teammates and that was perfectly done by the 35 year old and now tivoli are in a position to take full control of the game although we have 20 minutes remaining classic route one stuff from tivoli gardens absolute classic goalkeepers kick Flicked on by one striker into the path of another striker who buries it. Basic, simple, effective. Robinson. What was the form of both teams coming into this game? If you'd be fooled, if you turned up tonight and saw this game, you'd think Tivoli was the informed team and not Arnett Gardens. Yeah. What a strike by Kemar Fleming's brave dribble toward goal, run by the Arnett tacklers as if they weren't there. Then his left footed strike just skewed a bit wide. But Kemar Fleming's advertising the mood of this Tivoli team at the moment. They're hot and the momentum is with them. Dawkins is going to be replaced by Jermaine Teddy Johnson as Philip Williams now wants game management. Look at this. Well, he did jump big Newton Sterling, but there's no way. Those two have had a battle all evening. Jamar Martin and Newton Sterling. It's a mismatch. Poor Jamar Martin would need a chainsaw to even the odds between himself and Newton Sterling. You can't carry those on a football pitch. Tried his best, but out-muscled. Lacking in size. Sterling easily flicking the ball into the path of Dawkins, who despite his size, still has pace about him. As Ramon Reed fight, uh, found out. Yeah, Arnett makes a change to Mar Deacon, comes on. Dawkins, as we said, on the bench now, the number 24, having scored back in late September against Cavalier in Tivoli's 2-0 win, gets his first goal in eight games. This is incredible. Sit, uh, Dawkins is off, but Johnson is not yet on because he's adjusting his boot. But the change has been made. So Tivoli now down to 10. <laughs> wow. I've never seen anything like this. Not good. And Tivoli will know that Arnett is not the kind of team they, they would want to write off. With 17 minutes remaining. Harris. <laughs> Right there by Jafar Johnson, who made the intercepting clearance. Oh, Deacon does well. Retrieving the pass, but then spraying the pass through the middle, but to no one. Expecting Ramon Reed to continue his forward run. But when Deacon checked inside, Reed stopped because he thought he wasn't going to get the game again. 
Got to get the ball again, rather. I think there was, yeah, I think there was an issue there with the socks showing. So that is why we had the situation where <sighs> Teddy Johnson had to make the adjustment there with his boot. One of the silly rules in football uh, that harms nobody. Now he satisfies <laughs> the so guess official. What? So guess what? The Tivoli goalkeeper now has an injury. Conveniently. This is all part of the game, folks. <laughs> the man says he's hurt. He's hurt. Running some clock. First game of the season that Tivoli has scored three goals. They've scored two in their 2 0 victory of a Cavalier back on the 22nd of September. And guess what? I believe it's the first time this season that two Tivoli attackers have scored in the same game. Yeah. <laughs> so I think he got some cold water poured on his hand, lads. And he's right as rain again. <laughs> this is frustrating if you're the losing team. But this is exactly what you want if you're the team in front. I was commenting earlier about the disappointing season that Tivoli Gardens had last year when they finished seventh in the regular season. There's Pele Wilson as well in the red shirt beside Mr. Carl Chang. I beg your pardon, that looks like Cornell Jinsu. Cornell Jinsu it was, yeah, Cornell Jinsu it is. Former standout for Charlie Smith and Arnett Gardens as well. Oh, ball stolen here by Trayvon Reed. My man of the match so far, Lance. If Tivoli go on to win. Handball, the ball ricocheted off his arm just now. Wilson. Oh, has not been as clinical Wilson here in the second half as he was in the first. And uh, this game has fallen apart here. As has been the entire rhythm of this Arnett Gardens team. Yeah, we must remind the viewers who are looking at the clock still that there's a lot of time left in this game. But as I was making the point to you, Lance, in the past three seasons that we've been doing Arnett Gardens games, Arnett Gardens coming back, the record has not been good. No, it hasn't. The last two high-scoring results we've seen between these two teams were both won by Tivoli Gardens. 3-2 back in February last year. And uh, a 3-2 victory in December two seasons before that, or a season before that. Deacon sets Wilson going. Wilson with step-overs. Checked by Jabour Johnson. Referee Parchment saw nothing. Reed under pressure from Ramon Reed. That's Trayvon, the 19 year old in the 25 shirt. Gets a congratulatory handshake from his coach, Philip Williams. Another Tivoli man going on his haunches with a complaint. Fleming seemed to have taken a knock to his face, but he has gotten through a lot of work, Ramon Reed. Created the Arnett Gardens go with that cross for Kemal Malcolm in the first half, but has had to be doing, has had to do a lot of work in the defensive position. And let's remind the viewers, he's in a makeshift position at left back, necessitated by the injury to Al Nesbeth in the first half, which saw Reed switch from right back to left back. So he's been under pressure in an unnatural position. Oh, Clark. Very assertive there and comes out there was a handball there to mcgregor the referee though waving it off so before tonight arnett garns had beaten tivoli garns four consecutive matches without conceding a goal now tivoli has pumped three and passed them wow I guess it's a case where a member, a, a, a spectator, has gotten a bit too mouthy with the referee. And Danian Parchment has taken exception to what the supporter has said, is saying. 
and he's paused the game for the gentleman to be tossed, I suspect. So the game, I think, is going to be restarted soon. Yeah, he beat a hasty retreat. He's making his way behind the Tivoli goal now. That's him. <laughs> Yeah, one of the biggest supporters here, the Tony Spalling Sports Complex. The cameras have not escaped him on any night that we've been here. No, flamboyant, loud, committed, passionate, and it gardens through and through. And he often gives a lot of grief to match officials here at the Tony Spalling Sports Complex. Yeah, Parchment, widely regarded as one of the leading FIFA referees in CONCACAF at the moment, takes a firm stand here against this fan. His last international assignment, Danian Parchment, was a CONCACAF league final earlier this month between Deportiva Saprissa of Costa Rica and Motaco of Honduras. Running out on Arnett, Ramon Reed, Fabian Reed, Malcolm offside. That's criminal. You, you can't do that, uh, Kemal Malcolm. The play is developing. You are the likely recipient. You should be watching the line. You shouldn't be caught out like that. His body language is suggesting that he was watching the line and thought he was not offside. But mm. the assistant referee is well positioned to make the call. But we saw the defiance from Kemal Malcolm. Raniki Anderson, the former Arnett Gardens man, being warmed up by Tivoli, looking to batten down the hatches with that change whenever it's made. But if they can find another goal in the next two minutes, Lance, it will set up. A tremendous finale in this game as we see Anderson going through his pace as the former Arnett Gar Garden Central defensive star. Having left Tivoli, so he's gone back to where he started. Came over in a January transfer window from Tivoli to Arnett Gardens. Yes, five, and, five seasons ago, yeah, I think. And in that year, he helped them to win the title. Scored the opening goal in the 2-1 victory of a Portmore in the final at the National Stadium before the wonder strike from Marvin Morgan sealed it for Arnett. by Tamara Deacon, very fast and energetic attacking player who has come on here for Arnett, but seven and a half minutes left on the clock and Tivoli are looking to make the game safe. Yeah, and at no time have we felt the momentum of an Arnett Gardens fight back, Lance. Yeah. Very, very tight going in the middle part of the standings here the gap between third place Malines and ninth place Cavalier just five points between third to ninth and uh, early enough in the season that even though Tivoli Gardens are bottom of the table a steady improvement of form here could see them pretty comfortably taking themselves out of the relegation zone there was Fishnell Harris sneaking in Arnett with an opportunity here. Oh, but they're taking much too long to get the ball back into the box. And eventually they didn't. I blame Vishnu Harris. The goalkeeper was out of his area, out of the goal. And I would have gone for an effort. 
Where I visioned on Harris just now, a man has been the yellow card, it didn't see who, but Parchment just taking the name there. And a bit of comedy, slapstick stuff from Tivoli at the back. This is the goalkeeper, Clark, just keeping it in, and then dives. I think that's why the referee booked him. Cross inside, dangerous here. Malcolm tries to get close to it, but Clark pretty safe with the take. Now he's aching, it seems. Trying to run the clock. Referee Parchment comes over to have a look. So this Tivoli Gardens team, bottom of the table coming into this match, appearing to find good form here in the second half and sweeping past Arnett with three unanswered goals and setting themselves up. Clark gets a yellow card, the goalkeeper. Referee Parchment reckons for time wasting. No, I think he got that. No, no, no. I think he got that for the dive. Remember when he ran to just keep the ball in play? And he, he and tumbled he, over. He, yeah, he went down and tried to buy a free kick, but okay. the referee was wise to it. That's what he got the card for. As mentioned, the Tivoli Gardens last year, finishing seventh, did end up not making the playoffs because of a really wretched third round performance and they had just one win in their last nine games of the regular season this is the dive lance so he keeps it in takes a heavy touch deacon did catch him but it wasn't yeah. sufficient i think to fell him but he did fall and the referee didn't fall for the con produced the yellow card Big long left foot, left footed kick out. Anderson lining up to comfortably. Substitute reinforcement in the back for Philip Williams and Admiral Bailey's team. Wilson's kick floated in. Robinson gets the header out, but Edwards retrieves. Oldham slides the ball in. Harris can't get there in time. Because it wasn't his pass, it was Fabian Reed's pass. But he abandoned, he, he aborted the run when he saw his teammate in his line of sight. Felt that, well, you're better placed, you go retrieve. And in the end, it came to naught. So Sterling being withdrawn. Plans to make way for Raniki Anderson. Good change? I would think so. Had a good game, the big man. Yeah. So an attacking player taken off. A defensive player comes on. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer for some people. Aired when he did that on the weekend, taking Martial out of the game. But then I guess when you don't get a result in a game like that, the fans will not be happy. <laughs> Can't see how Martial would have helped them with defending the third goal scored by Sheffield United in the 90th minute. Yeah. Deacon tumbles over from the Barrington Price challenge. Looked pretty soft. Edwards under pressure here from Garrison. Oh, good football here from Tivoli Gardens. Now Robinson has it, waits for some support. Oh, Teddy Johnson's first touch isn't good. Raniki Anderson gets in there bustling and does enough to thwart the Arnett advance in midfield. How well has Jabir Johnson shackled Fabian Reed all game, Lance? 
Yeah. I'll answer my own question. Superbly well. Harris under pressure. Deacon. Strike on goal! By Fabian Reed and Clark with a diving effort. Tremendous save. Deacon's play just on the edge of the year, 18-yard box. Was very intelligent. Had nowhere to go. The ball comes to him. Look at him delay. Turn, turn. Just laid it off and went for the curl outside of the boot stuff. Almost like Zico in his Flamengo days. The great Brazilian midfielder. But not enough bend to take it outside of the goalkeeper's reach. Nicholas Clark, the Tivoli Gardens goalkeeper, being attended to. Just to have some abdominal pain. Oh, come on, Lance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the magic spray is being applied. It's just gamesmanship. Which, as again, I'm telling you, if you're losing, you hate this and you think it's time wasting. But if you're a Tivoli fan, you're saying, yes, boy, go down every chance you get. Well, we're now on to full time. Six minutes added on for stoppages. Six minutes, that's a lot of time. Martin's header off target for Arnest. How did a 1 0 lead turn into a 3 1 deficit for Arnett Gardens? How do you concede three straight goals at home? All these questions, the recriminations will be long into the night, one suspects, if this result holds, or if the scoreline holds. Yeah, usually the Stony Spalling Sports Complex a fortress for Arnett Gardens, but by, by their standards, their home, home record this season has been pretty unimpressive. Only two wins in five games at the Tony Spalling Sports Complex so far this year for Arnett Gardens. So their home record hasn't been that intimidating and now they're on the verge of losing one at home uh, this man on the ball has been superb for me tonight Lance Trayvon Reed yeah he's he's played well Johnson again beating Reed to the ball wow Chavor Johnson Garrison Campbell poor decision by Campbell Flemings fights hard and gets possession Johnson tripped from behind by Oldham well, is that maturity or what usually Johnson will be furious in a situation like that. I think the reason he said nothing, may he may have tried to trick the referee. So he knew that the con wasn't bought, so he can afford to smile. Did look as if he was tripped. I'd like to see that again. <laughs> or maybe as you say, let's give Teddy the benefit of the doubt. He's older and wiser now. Some of the Arnett fans looking as if they're leaving the complex two and a half minutes of the six added on already expired and Tivoli are in front by three goals to one and looking assured you know one of the criticisms that will be leveled at Alex Thomas is that he should have started with Vishnal Harris and the youngster Guthrie should not have started but Thomas will say well Guthrie was on it was one on and I was preparing to bring Harris on and then it became two one Robinson's head out. Jamar Martin just pressing up on the Tivoli defenders. Trayvon Reed, the 19 year old, has been outstanding for Tivoli Gardens tonight. <laughs> Hasn't yeah. scored, but. Look at this from either side, isn't it? Yeah. 
that's that, that looks more like it. <laughs> that's a, that's a Teddy Johnson we know. Wilson. Edwards. Wilson. Harris. Under pressure. Followed by Reniki Anderson. Parchment, the referee, wants to ensure that the ball is spotted at the correct position. Malcolm. See what his his choice will be here for striking this one. Both Wilson and Malcolm. Wilson, it seems, may strike it. No, it's Malcolm. Goes for goal. A rebound from goalkeeper Clark, who doesn't take it cleanly. Malcolm's cross inside. <laughs> Duh, Clemens with a. An attempted clearance that only gives up a corner. I think every coach in this league would want well, I'll tell you more. Oh, the header toward goal there from Vishnu Harris appealing for a handball. It's over. Yes, yeah, so we had six minutes added on, but by our watch, five minutes played. And uh, referee. Daniel Parchment has seen enough here, and Arnett Garns having led 1-0 on a 34th minute strike by this man, Kamal Malcolm, saw the lead wiped off with three unanswered goals, and Tivoli Gardens come up with an important win here that will lift them from the bottom of the table. From 12th to 11th, still in the relegation zone, but a sign that they're winning to fight their way out of trouble. First win since the 20th of October when they defeated Dunbar Holden by one goal to nil. Tivoli on fire, the Tony Spalling Sports Complex and smashes Arnett Gardens, the high riding team by three goals to one. Back with the match highlights and the post game interviews after this break. One bag of gold medal pan me no. Red stripe alone champion boy go. Pan up for them a singy and ten ton. Red stripe, watch out, watch out, watch out. Man, shall I make a forward boy? Red stripe Premier League champion boy's go. Every boy will win a run from boy. Red stripe Premier League champion boy now. Back down we run him all the time boy. The Red stripe Premier League champion boy, yeah yeah. So the final score then. Tivoli Gardens defeating Arnett by three goals to one and uh, get their first victory in over five weeks. But it was Arnett that made the running early with uh, Kamal Malcolm on 34 minutes heading in powerfully from the cross from Ramon Reed. Just starting between the Tivoli defenders and Malcolm strikes his third goal of the season. Tivoli would respond here with their captain, Barrington Price, turning the header in from the Jabour Johnson strike. Here's Johnson now. He will strike the ball from the top of the 18. The ball may have been going wide, and it was Price reacting quickly and just steering the ball in. His third goal of the season and leading scorer for Tivoli as a central defender. And here comes the 19-year-old Reed just weaving his way into the box his shot on goal stopped but not held and David Garrison snaps up as goalkeeper Rodriguez drops it and bangs in the equalizer for Tivoli the header on here from Newton Sterling and big Donovan Dawkins gets there before Reed can Slides the ball in for his second goal of the season. And Tivoli in front here now by two goals to one. And taking control of the game. Dawkins there. Happy with his effort. The final stats in the game. Arnett, 12 shots attempted on goal. Five on target. Tivoli, nine attempted on goal. Four of them on target. 
three of them scoring 25 fouls recorded in the match almost the same number by team 13 by Arnett though seven yellow cards in the match four of them going to Tivoli players Arnett having more ball possession at 52 percent but unable to make that count and it's Tivoli Gardens getting their first win in five weeks here in the Red Stripe Premier League and lift them themselves from 12th to 11th in the table George Davis is with the man of the match Thank you very much, Lance. So I'm here with uh, Trayvon Reedy, former Kingston College man. Trayvon, this trophy is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Uh, you had a good game today. Well, it was an expected performance from me and the team. As, as you can see, we had last um, in the table, and we got to come out here and fight um, to step up to 10th place and to fight to, um, to reach the top six. Uh, how motivated were you and the team by the fact that this was a TV game, bright lights, crowd, and against Arnett Gardens at Arnett Gardens? Was that a motivating factor? Well. As you can see, um, the Arnett and Tivoli Garden clash was um, a big clash, so we got to come, come out here and fight. Yeah, and that was it. Uh, is Tivoli on the rebound? Do you think that this victory today will kickstart a display from the team that is more consistent with the reputation of the football club? Yeah, I mean, this is exactly it, isn't it? Yeah. We are getting there now. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Trayvon Reed there, our man of the match, still a teenager, 19 years old. Alex Thomas walks into the shot with me. Coach, this is not what the fans expected, especially given the form of the team coming in. What went wrong, do you think? Um, not the result we wanted since that, but um, we start second half to come out flat, you know, but unfortunately we have to work again and come again. Um, in, in terms of the defeat and the impact it will have, will it be difficult to pick the boys up beyond this point? No, no not that difficult, you know, because they are, they are professional players and they understand um, what went wrong this um, since night and we're going to bounce back and come again for the next game on Thursday. All right, better luck next time. Thanks, man. Alex Thomas there, the uh, Arnett Gardens coach, saying that, well, it's one of those things. His team didn't fire tonight. They just came out flat, especially in the second half. Brian Rose walks into the shot with me, Brian. It was almost as if we were talking about Tivoli's post Mortem in the pre-game show. Now you've gotten a victory. How different are you feeling? Well, if you notice in my pre-match pre interview, I said that we're coming here for a victory and we achieved the victory. So I'm feeling elated and happy about the performance of the guys this evening. And as I said, this would be a turnaround for us and it started today. Your boys seem motivated. They seemed aggressive. They seemed ready to play the ball, the ball game at a high tempo. They seemed ready to take it to Arnold Grounds. What did you say to them before the game? Well, it was before the game, the preparation this week was very good, very intense. And we, even up to yesterday morning when we trained, the players were showing that they were prepared to put in the work and come and do the job today, and they did that. Well, uh, congratulations on your victory, and we hope that this is the start of Tivoli showing the fans that Tivoli is not dead. They're alive and with the football club. Well, as I said before, I told my friend, fans that they can guarantee that we're going to turn teams around. And we did that this evening, and we continue to do that. Let's hope you uh, get good luck in your next game. Thank you very much. All right, Brian Rose there, the manager of the Tiffany Gardens Football Club. So we'll be back here at Arnett Gardens next Monday for Red Stripe Football Mondays. The home team will be against Mount Pleasant Academy. That's the pregame show starts at 7.30 p.m., 8.30 p.m. ECT on Sports Max 2. More action on the channel, though, beyond this game because we have Champions League on Tuesday and Wednesday of this week, along with Europa League on Thursday. That's it from uh, the team here on behalf of Lance Whitaker, who called the game play-by-play -play for you. George Davis bidding you farewell from another edition of Red Stripe Football Mondays.
I miss me, miss me, say one bag of gold medal pan me up. Uh. Red stripe alone champion boy go. Pan a poor them a singy and ten to. Red stripe, watch out, watch out, watch out. Man, chill and get a forward boy. Red stripe, give me a lead champion boy score. Every goal when I run from boy. Red stripe, give me a lead champion boy now. Pop down, we run the marathon boy. The mission never made it that the champion boy pan up. Now I'm another song stars boy. Red 